The curious nature of mankind has seen him explore the atmosphere and forge the bird's mode of transportation. As early as December 17, 1903, planes were invented by Wilbur and Orville Wright, the brothers who would go a long way to amuse people to this day. Desire prompted us to dream of navigating the airborne vessels, and as mere toddlers, we would be asked of our dream careers, and as if we were programmed, we would frantically answer, a pilot. But as time and reality would have it, the dream started growing distant, and soon, for some, they remained to be just that, dreams. Ninety Nines is one of the few flying schools in Kenya that have put aviation in shape by offering various piloting courses. The institution is very essential and conveniently opened up in the country to avoid the struggle of students going overseas for the same package. That's the mentality of uh, the old stage, okay? Nowadays, uh, we believe anyone with a C plus is an average student and can be able to do anything. Like nowadays, they even go to the university with a C plus. So it's still for an average man, they can still make it, okay? That's why we get it as a C plus and above, both maths and English as well. We must have at least a C plus and above. The phrase passing with flying colors was coined to describe the pass mark of a pilot, which meant being almost perfect in all the subjects. But today, the rules are toned down a bit. The requirements of getting a private pilot license, one, academics, okay? You must be at least an average student. Average meaning you must get a C plus in, a, in your KCSE, that is a, an equivalence. If you're doing IGCSE or any other curriculum, that is, you must be having the equivalence. A jack of all trades is a master of none, and as such, 99's flying school only focuses on making the best pilots. The school does not offer other courses to air controllers, flight marshals, engineers, or flight attendants. Okay, currently we don't train engineers. Engineers are outsourced yeah, from other institutions. The martial arts we don't train. Other than piloting, the only other course 99 is op offering is the dispatch. A dispatch license, these are the guys that deal with uh, filing of fl flight plans, checking that the passengers are okay. In the, some of them you, you can talk of cabin attendants. Yeah. In order to become a fully certified pilot, one has to go through a couple of steps. Just like any other course, you start with the theory part of it as you head up to the practicals. So for you to get the private pilot license, one, you must have an SPL, a student pilot license. That means you must have passed the medical part of it. Okay, So you do the medicals to add a certified medical doctor who is approved by the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. And now after you get your CPL, you now commence your PPL. Once you finish with that, uh, with the ground school, you now start the simulator. All this is a good package that is attainable through a cost, a hefty cost indeed. But the cost is nothing compared to the benefits, as the career is lucrative once you're in it. The pilot license, um, the total amount is um, 800,000, which is broken down to ground school, which is three months, uh, two and a half months, sorry, in class, which is 50,000. After that, you proceed to the simulator for two weeks, which is 60,000. And then that's when you actually proceed now to the actual flying, which an hour's flight is 15,900. And for you, to, uh, com uh, for you to complete the private pilot license, you have to have at least a minimum of 40 hours. The commercial pilot license, you need at least a minimum of 2.5. The reason why is you have to build the hours to get to 160 where you combine the 160 with the 40, you finish with 200 hours, which is the minimum requirement. And after paying all that, would you be guaranteed a job? Assume this to be a very costly affair. Yes, it might be costly, might be out of reach of the majority, but uh, Kenyans are these days wealthy. We are looking at the cost of training a pilot uh, at about 5 million shillings. That is not much. It's, of course, quite substantial, but a good number of Kenyans can afford. And uh, it is not uh, an amount you'll be expected to pay at one go. 
Fear gets into the way of the many who are on their path to attain their dreams. Similarly, most people have shied away from pursuing this career because of the fear of heights. However, aviation institutions have their ways to train their students on how to overcome the fright. Will you have a total system failure? Yeah? Maybe I can go up there, radio, radios fail, that's just communication. My engines are still working perfectly. Maybe it's a four-cylinder engine, maybe one cylinder fails. It's still working. So, yes, situations will happen. You go with someone up, the person has never flown. It's upon you as the instructor to get a way of convincing these students this is the safest mean of transport. So that you show them various ways, various situations the aircraft can be in, and you recover so that the students come to believe in the aircraft. We still live in a society that underestimates girls who take up responsibilities at big male-dominated fields. The perception has led some to try and intimidate women from working in certain professions. However, this does not scare the competitive girls in this industry. It doesn't really bother me that much, but the fact that I need to impress many people is the factor that is sort of a challenge, but it hasn't really affected me personally in terms of when I'm actually flying. Because you know when I'm in my zone, I am in my zone and yeah. I don't bother thinking about other things that may disrupt my flying. Man is to error, but how do we avoid mistakes, especially with all the parameters on the cockpit? Keen is the remedy pilots apply in their daily routine. And as you fly and you gain more hours, it becomes part of you. You get comfortable and you get used to it. And you don't even think of it, you just think of controlling the plane and keeping safe. You usually scan. They might look like there are a lot of instruments, a lot of parameters, but with time you get used to. And there are certain stages where you look at certain instruments. So it's broken down, it's a bit easier. Yeah. But how does it become part of you and how do you ever get used to it? The answer is simple, simulators. Most Kenyans are not accustomed to machines like this one that I'm walking out from. Reason being, most flying schools omit this part. Well, right behind me is a very sophisticated flight simulator integral in aviation schools. And it's only available in two flying schools, 99 Flying School being one of them. Let's find out how it functions. 30 degrees altimeter steady, DA running to medium of north. 30 degrees attitude, 30 degrees altimeter steady, DA rolling to heading of north, north is coming, look straight ahead, select to the right. And the altitude, immediately the altitude. the altitude, so very well, it was very nice. So once the students have come and join 99 flying school, initially we take them through the ground class, that's for three months, so they can learn the theory part of flying before they start to the practical part. There's nothing to do in the practical if you don't have your theory well. So once they start their theory, after three months, they pass the exams, the theory exams, and then we take them to the small simulator. And so you will think, why do we need this phase? Isn't it a waste of time? Well, Barry thinks otherwise. Down fast the costs of the training. Now instead of taking someone to the real airplane, where he goes there and pay a lot of money just to learn the basic things about flying, we prefer to do it in the simulator and then we take him to the airplane. So it fast cuts down the cost. And you see in the simulator the good thing that you can uh, position the airplane in different aerodromes or different airports. So I can take the student and tell him, let's today fly in Tanzania. Now number three, also as you said, some people they will not take it seriously like a real flight. So also some students will not take something seriously that it can lead to an accident. So he can practice it here and crash here and see how serious it is. Yeah. You see? Yes. At least here you can crash, but in real life, it's yeah, it's, you, you don't get back. You don't, get back yeah. Yeah. you don't walk away with it. The simulator marks the last step in what the professionals stem as the ground school. We're now done with the theoretic part in the journey of becoming a pilot. You can catch us on the second segment of Aspirations, where we take you through the thrill of the airside. Dennis Otieno. Ebru TV.